So welcome back. We have uh, the T probe is in. We did the measurements which are required for the trial, and uh, Martin will go over the uh, anatomy on T. Martin, yeah, please. I will show it to you. Oh, hopefully, you can see me. We shortly uh, got, did some measurements on the septum. So in the fore chamber, you see you have quite a lot of space, 24 millimeters. The short axis at the base, we also have 24, 25. And then the uh, bicaval view, also 25. So And the thickness is not more than one to two millimeters. So uh, there are no signs of a thrombus, no ASD. I think uh, the anatomy of the septum is, uh, is perfect for, uh, for the device. Okay. One with the transeptal puncture, the transeptal sheath is uh, uh, in the uh, SVC. I'm inserting the needle now into the uh, dilator. I'm pointing the arrow towards uh, 6 o'clock or 5 o'clock. I'm pulling down the system. I'm looking for, uh, I need to see echo on my screen here as well. So I'm looking for the tenting. Mm -hmm. You're quite high, high up. I'm, I'm very high up, yeah. I'm going down. Mm -hmm. See the tenting. Uh, can you give me X plane yeah, to make sure. sure that I'm in the middle of the septum? Uh, then we cannot see it on your screen there. So the camera has to oh. focus. Uh, the camera has to focus on the, on the, on screen. the screen itself. Yeah. Or you go go back and forth. You can that, go back. I and can forth. do that quite so easily. So. Stay in the long in the long axis. Yeah, yeah. You see so jumping here, nicely in the, in the middle of here. the septum. Let's go to short axis short to make axis. sure that you are not. And it's still a bit too you, much you, anterior. Yeah, so you I can go, go a little, little, little bit posterior. posterior, probably. Yeah, nicely in the middle here as so well. So I take that. I'm through. Yep. I I'm advancing the dilator. I'm advancing the sheath. Up. I yep. already gave 3,000 units of heparin when I inserted the sheath in the groin, so I will give the remaining dose now, which will be a total dose of, uh, of 10,000. Next step, I will need the multipurpose catheter, which should be on the table. And the six French sheath in order to seal the valve of, of the transeptal. Multipurpose and something on it, yeah, but, okay. Now I go somewhere, I, I, usually, I prefer to go to the pulmonary vein, but we could also make just a loop in the left atrium, of course. You have to insert a 12 French sheath, so a little bit stability is good. Good to have. Uh, Martin, is this left atrial appendage where I am, or is it? Uh, yeah, left atrial appendage. So I go back with the sheath. Still, still in the left atrial appendage. Okay. Pull back, yeah. Yeah, left to appendage again. Again? Oh. Yeah. We should close it then, huh? <laughs> it's so <laughs> easy to get there, we should close it. Now? Yeah, this is also uh, left atrial appendage. Same? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pull, yeah. and now, let's see, now you're against the, the warfarin ridge, you're pointing in the right direction. Yeah, now you're, uh, okay. yeah, now it's okay. Now need amplats extra stiff. And then the next step will be to use a 12 French transeptal sheath. So the wire is up. I have with me uh, Pretak Matic, Martin Spons, as I mentioned, and Boas from uh, Victorious. He's on my side here to make sure that I do not mess it up. And we also have Dedi in the room. He is also from Victorious and can answer any questions regarding 
So while you are working about yeah. uh, the Victorious device, one of the questions that uh, Kolya had was about uh, durability. Kolya, do you want to talk about your question for Victorious? It was already answered a little bit. It was more about endothelization and whether or not this will affect the readings or not and what the experiences were in that area. So, and uh, did you get the answer for that or not yet? So, Dedi, if this gets covered by tissue, would you still be able to measure? Probably not, huh? So, from our experience we have in animals, uh, we have more than one year experience uh, post-implantation, uh, also with histopathology analysis, and we didn't see any tissue overgrowth over the sensor. But if that would happen, then you cannot measure anymore, of course. That depends the depends level of growth. Yeah. Okay. But um, we believe that even if with a small uh, level of growth, we can still measure. Okay, interesting. So I'm inserting the 12 French sheath now. We have, a, we have a couple other questions from the audience. We'll keep going. Mm -hmm. The question is to, uh, for both devices that were presented, how removable are they? Are they removable? Oh, uh, probably not when, when the device is ingrown. Do we have the device ready? Yeah. Uh, immediately, I don't, I'm not sure whether we could grab and retrieve it. I, I, I could not imagine why we should do that, but... Uh, why would you want to remove the device? Explain a little more. I don't mean immediately. I just mean, you know, a year later, two years later, if it has oh, to no. come out, gets infected. Infection. So say it was infected, right? So that's a... Uh, uh, is, this, is there a percutaneous ability to remove the device? Mm -hmm. Anyone from uh, Victorious can uh, answer? Boss, can you answer that question? Can the device be removed? I, I don't think so. If it is... Uh, yes, but, but later on when later it's... Later on, once the tissue growth... Uh, yeah. Is yeah. Okay. Other okay, questions so can advance while here, they are right? working? Mm -hmm. So I don't have to fluoro because they have a safety marker here on the catheter. And only when I have reached that, then the device will be at the tip of the sheath, correct? How far I am in in the uh, left atrium? Probably two yeah, centimeters. You're far out, so you have more so I can go back a little bit. I rotate a little bit clockwise because this brings it in a more perpendicular orientation to the uh, Oh, can we move the safety handle here, right? So I'm stopper, okay. Uh, okay. And now I can advance it further, correct? This is a little provocative mm -hmm. question for you. Um, any absolute need to do this on fluoroscopy? Could you do this bedside with echo? I think so, yeah. Yeah, but why should we do this bedside? No, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of uh, expansion to places where they don't have... Uh, easy access to cath labs. Well, then they will not have the access to Victorious, I guarantee you. So how far I'm away from the uh, septum? Pretty far, huh? So I'm slowly pulling. I mean, you can do transeptal puncture under echo guidance, as I have learned from Dr. Pan, but uh, this is certainly not an urgent need to think about. We can go to a little bit to LAO. I'd like to see it more profile. How is the pushability or reactability in comparison yeah, right. to mm -hmm. uh, ASD device? Does it let me let me focus here on, on, on my handle? Otherwise, you confuse me. So now I have the, the device is out now, and uh, the difference between this device and, and ASD closure devices is this has to be opened mechanically. It's not self-expanding in this uh, situation. It's controllable. Yes. So I now rotate this uh, up here, and this will form the left atrial disc. It's hard to see. Let me do this under center. Echo is see it a little bit better. Okay. That is okay now, huh? So I'm at the stop. Okay. Uh, I have to pull back the whole thing yep. until I'm touching the septum. Here we go. Like yep. that. Okay. And now I can press this handle here yeah, and, and, teeth and up teeth again. Okay. So now I keep this at the level of the septum. It's unsheathed, okay? And now I continue to, uh, there's a safety lash here, which I have to, be, to, to move, and then I can continue to open the right atrial part of the device. You see it coming? 
you see this better yeah. on, uh, okay, I'm at the hard stop now. So now let's check the position. There's a little tension on the device, you yeah. see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or rotating maybe, huh? Okay, good. To me that looks good. That looks but perfect. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Tension. Still tension. I advance a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Now it's well. It's just tilted because yeah. of the sheath. So, yeah. But it's nicely okay. in. I think. So it's we uh, can release it. Yeah. Right? And in order to release it, I have to press this one here into the direction where the arrow is below. Oh, can you move this away? This is a long distance to rotate. Yeah, there's a marker which is moving, which tells me I have to rotate much more here. Can we see echo and floral both? Yeah. So now it's a hard stop here. Okay. And now it's That's released. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see that's nice tilting now. Okay. Good. Echo looks fine, yeah, floor looks perfect. fine, so that's it. And now we do some, uh, you can now try to measure, yeah, but this yeah. will take some time until... We need five, ten minutes. Five, five ten minutes. Just to organize, okay. five, seven Any minutes. Any questions regarding the implantation First so question. Far? First question from uh, Dr. Martucci. Uh, is it uh, repositionable? You know, if you don't catch the septum, floppy septum, can you reposition the device if you're not happy, or is it? As long as long as it is still attached, yes. At this time of point, I mean, you could go in with a snare and pull it out. I'm, I'm sure that would work, but we we never have done this. But uh, uh, as long as it's attached, you can completely retrieve it and and uh, reposition it. Yet. What's the earliest you can get uh, measurements from the device? Is in now five minutes. In five minutes. <laughs> Do we need the TE probe still? Do we need the TE probe? We can remove it, right? Uh, yes, if you don't need it. I don't need it. Then so patient that. is coughing. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? If not, then you should... Do you have another lecture for we this do. session? We okay, do. Okay, then go to the lecture. We prepare the measurements Perfect. and come back to you as soon as we have arranged the assembly for that. Sounds good. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, Professor Sievert, you're live. Yeah, they are just they are ju just uh, trying to obtain the measurements. We did fluoro in two projections. Can we see fluoro? Just uh, uh, for looking for the orientation of the sensor. So we did this in AP and in lateral, and now they are uh, trying to find a good position for the belt, which is actually doing the measurements, and they are still working on that. Yeah, we are optimizing to understand the orientation due to the electromagnetic field between did you the get implant. Any signal or not yet? So we have a signal, absolutely, but we're working to have an optimal signal which is stabilized. Okay, show us the suboptimal uh, uh, tracing. Yeah, so no, we don't have tracing yet. We're now optimizing, oh, okay. yeah. So, okay. can you so show they us need more time. They need more time. This, uh, this is the that. first measurement, yes. Um, uh, see, Professor, can you move the lead shield? We'd like to see what the computer, what they have that's actually attaching to the patient so we can understand the hardware a little better. Okay, so they want to see, without showing his face, of course, yeah. they want to see this belt, which is around the chest. Who is, who is filming this? The camera at the foot of the bed is showing the computer, so we can see that, but yeah. uh, we could see the belt, that would be helpful. No, no, we want to see the belt, which is this around is the yeah. chest. No, no, here. No? Just protect the identity of the patient. Yeah. Uh, Julia, we müssen das mal richtig davor machen. Come here. Yeah, okay. Ah, very nice. Okay. So... Oh, wait a second. Okay. So you see the belt now? Yeah. Okay. No, that's that's perfect. the belt. That's and perfect. this is the belt the patient will use in his home uh, uh, in the morning or whenever and uh, put this around and we try now trying to find the best position to get the best signals. So now they are asking what is the orientation of the of the uh, sensor in on fluoro of the tube uh, the tube of the this tube of yeah, the exactly. tube and when you look at the lateral it's pointing downwards about 45 degrees downwards. No. Uh, yeah, from, from, from the spine downwards, from the spine downwards. And from in the AP projection, it's pointing towards the right foot. 
Okay. Yeah. We previously saw that the tube is more parallel to the spine, and yeah, now we need to just it's, find it's the right. Not, yeah, it's not parallel, but it's about 45 yeah, yeah. degrees. Like this. Yeah. Okay. This, this is very interesting, right? Because, um, uh, and actually from the spine, it's uh, pointing, yeah, it's pointing a little bit. If you go on the lateral projection, it's pointing <coughs> towards the head. Uh, in some uh, it depends upon where you where you start thinking about it. So it, when you look at the current fluoro, mm -hmm. uh, the device is on the right side of this tube, which means it's not it's pointing from the spine downwards, uh, downwards yeah. and yeah. anteriorly, right? Right. Yeah. So uh, the because this, I'm assuming whatever projection that you're able to get the belt that you do now is the same projection that the patient will have to do at home. Yes. Uh, is there any, uh, how, f uh, what is the fidelity of this uh, uh, kind of uh, projection for the tube? Meaning that are there ever any instances where you have the tube in one projection and it's going great for the first month and then after that they have a trouble getting a signal? How often does it happen that the signal drops in the follow-up period? That you haven't seen that yeah. not in the preclinical or not in the clinical, right? So yeah. the, the initial step is a little bit difficult to find the best projection, the best but position, then, yeah. but then it's pretty stable. Exactly. So that's stable. not a concern. Does it matter whether they are lying down, sitting up, uh, in terms of getting the uh, belt on? Or the hemodynamics is obviously different, the, 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 the values, um, but no, I mean, in terms of usability, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so I mean, if we you want have either sitting or standing. It's a good question. So if, the, if you have found the position for the belt, it doesn't matter for the, for the uh, quality of the signals, whether the patient is laying down or sitting up. We never tested this systematically, right? Yeah, I mean, but they can either sit or stand, and in yeah. both scenarios, we will have a signal. Yeah. This okay. is what we saw so, so, it's so stable. far. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. Uh, all right, so I think uh, from a time perspective, uh, well, we can uh, we may have to uh, move on to the next session. And at some point yeah. later today, you can let us know what those uh, yeah. measurements are. Okay. It would be interesting to hear that. Any other final questions for uh, CVC Frankfurt? No, I think everybody's just okay. uh, very excited about the case. Thank you very much for a uh, wonderful presentation. Thank you very much.